mom and dad <laughs> reminded me about do you guys remember what eric wanted to name they think it was ryan it was like hobby 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 dad yeah dad was saying that's what our son's middle name should be hobby 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 it's an old family name it's an old family yeah. name <laughs> a lot of history caden hobby gabby sunberg it sounds pretty hobby nice, gabby actually. first of his name yeah. <laughs> son of hobby Lord of Gobby. <laughs> He's gonna choose to go by his middle name. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Be like Caden Bono. Was too plain. Yeah. Until he gets to like later high school, and he's like, "God damn it, people won't stop calling me Hobby Gobby now." <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was fun when I was in first grade. It was dope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Previously in the Brotherverse. We have reason to believe that one of the talismans of legend is actually being kept in the Plain of Air. The Aarakocra tribe live in the Crescent Islands south of Toth. There has been a storm that's raged there for millennia. All right, to the harbor. You keep sailing and eventually you break through and you now seem to be in the eye of the storm. You can see a bunch of islands in the distance. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys are in your family ship after just fighting the sea serpent, and you've just sailed out of the storm and into calmer waters. And so you're able to see a little bit of blue sky above you. There's still a bunch of swirling clouds, but the waves have decreased quite a bit. It's pretty calm. Um, you see the wall of like black clouds behind you and can still hear thunder in the distance. But in front of you, you now see just like huge area of open water and you see some land masses in front of you and the closest landmass seems to be a gigantic island with it's like a center or central rock spire that's reaching up into the sky and like basically out of view like through the clouds that are still above your head so it's like a very tall narrow island that's the only island uh, you can see other small islands around it, and you see some land masses in the distance behind it. Uh, that is just the closest one to you. Cool. Let's circumvent the main island and just go to the back ones. <laughs> <laughs> Smaller islands would be better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are there any signs of life? Uh, you are too far away right now to tell. Like This, this is still a little bit of a distance away. All right, well, let's uh, head towards that Spire Island. Yeah. All right. Keep keep an eye off the bow for uh, reefs. Okay. And nice. I'll, I'll watch out for choppy water. That's usually a sign of reefs. I Ooh, crank yeah. up my perception to little, to ten. Little little white caps circling and s steer clear of that. Mm-hmm. It's a great idea. <laughs> All right, so you guys have a nice tailwind behind you, so uh, you're going to be sailing for a little bit, and these are very uh, tropical waters. It's a very nice turquoise blue, and you're um, sailing past some smaller rock spires that are on the other side of you, and you can see like vines reaching down, and you can see some like small monkeys playing in the, the vegetation uh, oh. And attached to some of these islands, you're seeing that there are smaller, like, floating rock formations that are attached by vines to these islands. So it appears to be there's some, like, levitating rock formations here as well. Uh, and so you're sailing for a little while longer. you got some, like, dolphins playfully swimming next to your boat right now. And uh, you're getting closer and closer to the landmass. And now you can really see it come into view and you can see the beach ahead of you. Uh, and you see some uh, some choppy waters to your right, but you're oh, uh, you're avoiding clear. that. <laughs> it's okay, Ark. I, I think they're just dolphins. Oh, steer towards it. So yeah, so you Did steer you towards. Say... You see, it's a wall of dolphins. <laughs> Look, it's a bunch of dolphins. A wall of dolphins. <laughs> Sweet. They, uh, 
they part ways no so it's a reef and i'm glad you said so because i was gonna make you crash into it but you called it out so i can't do it <laughs> Uh, and so you make your way towards the the island and now you are running up into the sand and you find yourself at a very placid beach with the waves crashing around you and there's palm trees everywhere and large blooming pink flowers uh, on the, in the underbrush and you hear the, the calls of birds and other animals coming out from deep within the jungle in front of you. Are there any docks? Uh, you do not see any docks, um, but in front of you, you do see what appears to be like a little totem that has a bird skull on it and some feathers and some some beads and jewelry and things of that nature. All right, well, let's drop anchor and take the little dinghy to shore. Perfect. Sounds good. Top in. Let's do it. Yeah, so you you abandon the family boat and take the dinghy and and come the rest of the way up to shore, and now you are standing there, and it's I would say right now the time is like dusk, so the sun is beginning to set, and you hear some nighttime noises like crickets and things along with the other animals. Huh? What? Look, look at this thing. And can I go inspect the totem? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you uh you take a closer look and it's it's basically like a, a human sized skull, but it is a bird skull. Um and it has very, very colorful feathers, like reds and blues and greens, kinda like a like a parrot. And uh like I said, there's some some jewelry around it. And uh you see that like inside the eyes they're glowing a little bit. Hmm. Well that's peculiar. Seems like there's some bioluminescent fungi on this. Maybe. Or, or like magic. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> All magic is actually bioluminescent fungi. <laughs> IRL, I don't doubt that. <laughs> should I? Should I take it? Should I swap it with something? I'll stick oh, my. Yeah. I'll stick my um, javelin in place of it. Of the totem. Real, Do real it. quick. Yeah, I'll pull it out of the ground and shove my javelin in the hole so that if there's any booby traps, they don't. Trap us in boobies. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, maybe no. I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Replace it with me. <laughs> <laughs> I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> <laughs> a, a what trap? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, okay. you doing this? <laughs> Yeah, what do you guys think? I think go I for it. Yeah, right. I was just gonna like check it for our, our Arcana to see what kind of magic was going on, but I yeah yeah check it. Make sure I'm not gonna die. Okay, yeah, I'll try to sense the type of magic that's coming off this thing, so the glowy eyes. Okay, roll an Arcana check. That's a seven. Okay, um, you can't really tell. Hmm. I don't know, guys. Stab away. All right, doing it. Ready? Huh. All right, roll a sleight of hand check. Oh, critical failure. <laughs> <laughs> so you you go and you take your your javelin and you're like just about to carefully swap it out, and then you sneeze, and uh, you like basically run into the totem and knock it over. And like the bones and feathers and stuff all fall to the ground. And then you see the eyes glow as that happens. And you hear this like screeching bird sound that is pretty deafening to your ears. And it rings out across the entire jungle. Oh, oh it's shit. like an uh, alarm. Uh, put the javelin in the hole. <laughs> so Stand you up and stick it in there. So you put the javelin in the hole, but the screeching continues. And uh, all of a sudden, you see some dark figures fly in the sky over the jungle and start flying over you, and they're circling you. And they get closer to you, and then they land in the sand. And it's a group of humanoid birds that are very, very colorful. Looks like maybe whatever the skull was, that's them. And so they 
have spears in their hand and there's eight of them and they point their spears at you. Hello, fish. I am fish. We bring fish. Everyone's like, what demons are these? No, no, no demons. Just, uh, just travelers. I, I promise we didn't mean to knock over your, your pretty little grave. <laughs> we are not Greg's. There are no such thing as travelers here. Well, then we are gods. <laughs> and you see them look at each other and they laugh a little bit to themselves. It's like, please, you look not like gods. Well, then how did we get here? Maybe you were sent by demons. Maybe you were sent by gods. But no one breaks through the storm walls around the Crescent Islands. There's, there's our boat right there. <laughs> and they all look up at the boat and then look at each other for a minute. And the, the one who is talking walks up to you and he's like, Is it true that you broke through the storm wall through the big waters? Yes. Yep. I'm uh, proficient in navigator tools and water vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> we sailed upon the family vessel. <laughs> Roll a roll a persuasion check. I got a 19. 15. Okay. You see the the birds all go and like whisper to each other. And you see the, the main one who's been talking and says, like, we have talked it over and we would like you to come with us. Our chief would love to meet you if you've truly sailed through the cloud walls. Gladly. Yeah. We'd love to meet him too. We've got we came in search of uh information. That is something that he will have to speak with you alone. Like quickly. Okay. We shall carry you to him. Ha. Huh. All right. Oh, okay. Sweet. Uppies. Oh yeah. Uppies. <laughs> <laughs> and so you see them put their spears um like in their talons and they fly up into the air and they say Hold on to the spears. So you guys can like a pull-up bar. Yeah. Do I get okay. two birds? Yeah. <laughs> the ones that fly over <laughs> to orcs are each holding the end of a spear, so it's two of them. <laughs> I wrap my like hand, arms and legs around the little spears <laughs> so I can hold on better. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, and everyone roll a, roll a strength check. <laughs> or an athletics check. I just hold on by my tail. <laughs> Critical failure. Me too, but I'm lucky, so I get to roll again. 20! But Chris, you get to add your athletics to it still. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 10. 10? All right. 9. All right. So you guys are all kind of like barely holding on, uh, Yenry especially. And so the birds for you, they like take some rope that they have and they, they hog tie you to the pole. Ready for a roast in later. Yeah. <laughs> And then you feel your, yourself slowly lift off the ground and you're now soaring over the jungle uh, canopy. And the sun is really starting to set behind the large uh, mountain in front of you. And you are seeing that you're basically flying towards the center of the island, which is where the like large kind of peak is rising up from. And as you get closer, you start to see that there's waterfalls cascading all along and down this giant peak and there's one main central one that looks like it's falling from almost as far up as that you can see all the way down to the ground and you are flying past the canopy and you get towards this main waterfall and you start to see a bunch of lights and fires and it looks like you've come across a village and the houses are built up the peak and on all these craggy rocks. And they look like little thatched like birdhouses. And the main waterfall is falling down into a large pond that is sitting directly underneath this sort of hanging city of birdhouses. And so you guys fly in and there's one giant central dome that's hanging from a craggy rock. And you fly into a small hole opening into this big thatched room. And there are torches that are lining the entire sides. And you see a lot of uh, feathers scattered everywhere on the ground. And in front of you is a very regal looking bird sitting on a throne. And he is just like 
lit by the torches around him. And the birds that have been flying with you set you down in front of this large bird king. Hey, I don't want to sound ungrateful or untrustworthy, but could could you cut the ropes off me? I'm feeling a little like I'm going to be dinner. Oh, yes, of course. My apologies. (laughs) And one of the birds cuts you loose. Okay, thank you, thank you. (laughs) And uh, the large bird in front of you on the throne, like, gets up very slowly, and he waddles up to you, and he says, (laughs) What creatures are you? We have not seen the likes of you types in very, very long time. Are you demons? Are you angels? Or are you merely lost? <laughs> we are none, none of, the, of above. the above. You can keep guessing. We'll give you three more guesses. <laughs> <laughs> and he chuckles a little bit at that. Like, maybe it would be easier if you tell me how... Did you arrive in our lands? We are mere mortals, but with a lot of determination. Uh, You see, we came here actually because of an old legend from your lands that speaks of thunder and wind combining uh, as forces. Um, And we think it might be a hint to uh, something we might be looking for. And his, uh, his eyes go very wide at this. He's like, You've heard tales of the gods of thunder and wind. It's like, there are not many people who would know that outside of our lands. It's like, we know not of anything past the cloud walls. And if you come from out there, I am not sure how you would have heard these tales. But I believe that it means that you are destined to be here. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we'll go with that. We have been separated from the rest of the ocean for thousands of years. We thought that nothing existed anymore past the clouds. Some have tried to venture forth through there, but none have returned. There's a whole world out there. Maybe they just didn't want to return. It's like a like a rumspringa. <laughs> a rumspringa? <laughs> yeah. That's I don't like know the, that uh, that's like the Amish. I think uh, it's Amish. They get to go out oh. in the world on their like 16th birthday, and then if they want to go <laughs> join the real world, they can. And otherwise, they come back and go into the Amish society. Rumspringa. That's right. It's the best because it's just such a fun word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah. Everyone has their super sweet 16 and never comes back from the storm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or they die. One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> and he starts, uh, he starts pacing around you. He's like, I feel so fortunate to be in your midst. Do you, do you bring tales of the gods of thunder and wind past our knowledge? Potentially. How old are you? What's Who's the oldest of your clan? I am the oldest. I am but 73 years old. Hmm. Oh. That's not that old. Well, we believe that a man named Talus may have traveled here long ago with a magical item and went to the plane of air potentially and in the process may have caused the storms surrounding your island that's my theory my understanding yeah do you guys have any like uh strange portals or 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 anything uh, magical areas about your island that you're aware of um he he is sitting and looking at you for a moment kind of he looks like he's pondering what to say. Um, and after a moment, he looks up. he's like, this island is very spiritual. It is very important to us. It's like, there are areas of great religious uh, importance here. It's like, it seems that you are aware of our, not our creation story, but so, sort of the creation story of the world as we know it now, of the storm coming and some man from the outside world coming here and traversing the great peak of our island to the top past the clouds. Like the the area at the top of our island is very dangerous. It is guarded by a cloud giant. Like we only go up once every year or so to pay tribute in order to live peacefully down below. What are you pay with 
we offer him sweets. Hmm. Sweets? Oh, nice. <laughs> what, 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 what kind of sweets? We are quite the connoisseurs of pastries here. We have cakes and cookies <laughs> and cupcakes. Damn it, we should have brought the ice cream boat. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> so Cloud Giant has a sweet tooth. Okay. So yes. if we were to try to traverse this mountain, would you suggest that we bring along some pastries? <laughs> I would, yes. It is the only way in which he accepts mere mortals to walk among him. He has, <laughs> he has a pet beast, a pet dragon that lives in the pool that is below our town here. We offer the beast treats, and then the beast carries us to the top with more offerings. Hmm. Oh. So there's a pretty easy way up the mountain. You just need to, like, bake some muffins. Yes, but the lizard is quite picky. Okay. <laughs> so you have to, you gotta bake real good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Does its taste change, or do you know, kind of know what it likes by this point? He seems to like all kinds of sweets, but he likes unique confectionaries. Okay. Let's bake a Trojan cake. (laughs) We'll fill it with bears. (laughs) Do you have any bears? You'll be so surprised. (laughs) (laughs) Like, we have no bears, but we do have the makings of some sweet treats that might please the diabetes. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Is that offensive? I can't decide. <laughs> I feel like maybe we shouldn't give him straight. <laughs> Get him some insulin. <laughs> You've been riding up to the mountain one too many times. I am beastus. So we have to make a feastus for the diabestus. <laughs> yes, I believe this is the only way. <laughs> so, you have um, some ye- yeastus? <laughs> and maybe the kitchen that we can use to bake the treatsus? Yes, we have... Quite the kitchen for you. But I must let you know that the beast loves everything to be made very fresh. Like you will have to milk the cows and churn the butter and <laughs> grind the grain. <laughs> do we do we have to do this? It sounds like you guys have been doing this for years. Can you just do it for us? It is not my offering to make. If you wish to go, it is your journey and your cake. This is like the uh, the, chi- the chicken who made the bread, right? Was that <laughs> you did you did not help pick like a the wheat? Do you remember the that book? Kind of, oh, that kind of chickens kind of you've been hanging out with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that allegory. Or he's like, there was the old children's book where nobody, everyone refuses to help the. I think it was a chicken who was making bread. He's like, will you help me pick the wheat? And you're like, ah, oh, no, I'm too busy. And then when she makes the bread, everyone's like, oh, can I have some? It's like, well, you did not help me pick the wheat. You did not help me grind the wheat. You know, so you don't get any bread. And I feel like it just ended with nobody getting bread. <laughs> what a great I story. What's the moral of that story? <laughs> yeah. Like, work together? I think it's, I yeah. Guess. Be nice to your neighbor, help them out. And mm-hmm. Or else, you, or else also, you don't get bread. <laughs> yeah, but also, then, that, are, are you the dick in that situation? Like, <laughs> the, Am I the dick? The chicken. I mean, like, is the chicken the good guy? Is, is that the, the chicken the cock? The chicken yeah. is the... I think the chicken is the, the good guy. But he's like, also pretty... He holds grudges and is selfish. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> it's like it's like an eye for an eye. Yeah, so you didn't help me, so you don't get bread. And you're like, but you have plenty of bread. Couldn't you help other people out? I don't... Ah, <laughs> uh, it's a story of greed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe that's maybe you're supposed Every to be man more for like the it's, chicken. Mm-hmm. Oh, There's it's from like the Libertarian's the fairy tale book. This makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to make it with love. That's got to be one of the ingredients. Yes. So are you up to the task? Yeah, I'll sure. bake a cake. Yeah. 
Let me think about what I want to make for this thing. Do we have to make three separate cakes, or are we all making one big cake? No, your your party may make one cake. One that should cake. suffice. One large, giant lizard-sized cake. Is that his favorite thing, or does he prefer scones or? Cupcakes? As I said, the diabetes does appreciate uniqueness. Okay. If you're able to give him something he has not had before. <laughs> yeah, that's. I feel like cake is the most generic of pastries. Yep. We gotta think of something me. interesting. Yeah. It does remind me of my, my favorite gameplay sequence in Paper Mario was baking a cake as Princess Peach. <laughs> I remember oh, that. Oh, yeah, I remember like, that. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, had to, like, yeah. time it right where you just stir for a certain amount of time and then put it in the oven for a certain amount of time, and then you get a perfect mm-hmm. little cake out at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Was that to give to Bowser? Might have been, yeah. But it's such a nice, relaxing, like, break from the normal gameplay. <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember they'd often cut cut in when she was just, like, in her tower or whatever at Bowser's. You're just like, yeah. <sighs> You kind of had to, like, sneak around. You're, you're, like, gaining information by, like, walking around and, like, spying on people, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. And you'd always play dumb when they found you. And it's like, oh, I was just going to the bathroom or whatever yeah. it was. Couldn't, couldn't you change into like Goombas and stuff? Like Princess Peach had some ability to change into things? Or is that like a Mario Eventually, power? That maybe. Got? Yeah. That might have been a thing that happened later. Yeah. I think so. I have vague memories of that. <laughs> but anyway, Diabetes. Yeah. Diabetes. Making him a, a, a cake, cinnamon or not rolls, a cake. scones, muffins. Croissants? Mm. A souffle? <laughs> oh. The oh. most difficult of all. Like, we do appreciate a good croissant here. We are the croissant people of the Crescent Islands. Oh. Oh. The croissant islands? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, yeah. let's do that. We can make some pan au chocolat. And make some nice chocolate-filled uh, croissants. <laughs> Do we have to pick the cocoa? Do you have cocoa trees here? <laughs> like we do. We have dried cocoa beans in our storage areas. Uh, uh, I would like to dry them myself. Thank you very much. Give me the that fruit. That is fine with me. You may pick the cocoa beans from the cocoa tree. Yes, please. <laughs> and with the power of fire, you may dry them. I was reading about that recently. Drying cocoa production. Out the power of fire. I now want to go eat an actual <laughs> cocoa fruit. Because it's supposed it's, it's to be... It's a fruit? Yeah, it's a fruit. It looks like a papaya. Really? Really? Yeah, and if you break it open, there's like white flesh around each of the seeds, and then the seeds is the cocoa. But they nice. say that the fruit is like a sweet and tart flavor, and then you can bite into it, and it's like pure cocoa in the, oh, in the nut. Wow. I'm always surprised with stuff like that, like why that stuff isn't like sold. Like, is it yeah. bad? The cocoa? Yeah. The fruit, I mean, there's yeah. got to be so much fruit waste. Yeah, they just toss cocoa. it. Because no one gives a shit. They just want the chocolate. Damn. <laughs> That's like That's cashews. Sad. The first time I saw how cashews were grown. There's a whole fruit. It's just, there's like just a whole a fruit. D- it's just a dingleberry nut. on the yeah, end exactly. of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old dingle nut. <laughs> yeah. You just throw like, away oh, the yeah. whole, like, <laughs> yeah. I just want that dingleberry. <laughs> <laughs> And I really want to taste the fruit that goes along with it. Because it's mm-hmm. like a whole like apple sized fruit. Yeah. That's like when I found out that like coffee beans like it's like a cherry. It's a coffee cherry. Yeah. Yeah. It, that that doesn't taste good. It's coffee so cherries weird. don't taste good. But like you've tried you, it? You probably do yeah. something with it. I mean, beets don't taste good, but they've made their way into our society. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of yeah, other things. I think they just kind of like grind them up and they um like use it as fertilizer. Yeah. All right. I guess that works. Yeah, that made me uh, a little more understanding about the price of cashews. Mm-hmm. After I yeah. saw that, I was like, it's like one each per fruit. one of these fruits? I was like looking at the bag of cashews I have, and I'm like, this is this would be huge if it had the whole fruit <laughs> attached to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like weird. Like 100 load. pounds. <laughs> yeah, especially when you see like peanuts, and you pull up like a root, and it's just like, you know tons of peanuts basically jumbled together like a like a thing of grapes or something that's the like weirdest bunch of thing them. yeah i've never seen that before uh, p- yeah, i feel like it's like a strange. bushel of peanuts yeah, yeah. you yeah. pull up like a root and it's just like a bushel of peanuts what 
Yeah, yeah. it looks kind of fake. <laughs> yeah, <'Cause> you've, <laughs> yeah I, I you've like only seen peanuts, that. like, you know. <laughs> In that a sounds like a, like a, a fable where it's like a money tree. It's like, yeah, you just go pluck them out of the ground. <laughs> yeah. Shells. <laughs> Plant a peanut. That's why George Washington Carver, is that his name? Did so much yeah. with them. Just pick them up mm-hmm. by the bushel. Make literally anything out of them. Yeah. Anything? What a dude. What else did he yeah. make? He made, he made like hundreds medicine, of cosmetics. Things. Like, he um, made cosmetics? All- I think yeah. he did all sorts of weird I think weird he made, stuff, like, synthetic plastics. He made, like, what? he released a book that was, like, what was it, like, 200 recipes with the peanut or something like that? And it was, like, mm-hmm. different foods you could make out of peanuts and everything. Jeez. And then a bunch of, like, yeah, like, medicinal and cosmetic products. The whole part of it was that, like, you could, uh, or the po- whole point of it, excuse me, was that you could, like, self-sustain with a farm of peanuts especially because they didn't require like off-season plantings that would like regenerate nutrients into the soil. You could kind of grow them year after year and keep uh, self-sustaining on your own farm. Did you read a whole book I want to grow peanuts now. (laughs) Uh, No, I listened to a podcast recently where they brought this up, but they also talked about it back in like school. (laughs) I remember that he uh, was, I I knew he was connected to peanuts, but I didn't know all this other. But yeah, it's definitely fresh in my brain because it came up on a podcast recently. Well, yeah. That's that's cool. We should yeah, put that's a peanut butter start. on the croissants. Yeah, chocolate peanut butter croissants. It's like a Reese's Ooh. cup. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. he, yeah. he's oh, gonna man, fucking I, love it. Can we make this for real? I want one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, we'll release a recipe hungry. afterwards. Yeah, so yeah. The the, the diabetes croissants. <laughs> 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 It's like death by chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that would offend a lot of people. They just released a recipe called Diabestus. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, B-E-A-S-T. Nah, it's clever. Maybe not. Well, let's just make a fake uh, one of those I hope it's recipe clever and not sites and we'll, just, we'll release <laughs> no, I think it it's clever. see what happens. That's the motto of this podcast. I hope it's clever and not offensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the tagline on every episode. <laughs> yeah. It's a fine line. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I like this idea. I'm going to go pluck some fa- fantasy bushels of peanuts because that's how they grow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to pull them out of the ground. What is- <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to make some peanut butter. Dope. All right. So, With my uh, fists. <laughs> I would love to make you roll for that. Oric yes. needs to give us a uh, what is it? A Bubba Bubba gun? No, wait, what? Yeah, Bubba from. <laughs> <laughs> like his name's not Bubba Gump. They weren't give us some Bubba <laughs> from what? <laughs> some, no, some Bubba, I now Bubba pronounce Forrest. you Bubba and Gump. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a different movie. But yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say he has to give us a, a Bubba speech about all the things you can do with peanuts. <laughs> While he's picking the peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> Got peanut butter, peanut etc. Peanut plastic. <laughs> peanut, peanut shampoo. Peanut face peanut wash. <laughs> makeup. Peanut oil. Peanut That's ring. about all you can make with peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the king interrupts at this point as you've been talking about the possible <laughs> ingredients. It's like, please, please, you may talk more about your recipe once we get to the kitchen. And he says, follow me. And he starts waddling. Wink, wink, wink. Oh, my God, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours later. Wink, yeah. wink, wink. Yeah, so he winks. Across he the winks floor, his way out of there. <laughs> and we follow him. Mm-hmm. And you're uh, moving through these like hallways of they're like thatched tunnels that are moving between like birdhouse to birdhouse. And so you make your way down one into an area that's sort of below his throne room. And there's a gigantic kitchen there, and it has many f- French imported stoves lining the walls. No, it's just <laughs> a bunch of like cauldrons and fires. <laughs> And uh, you have some tables in the middle, and there's uh, shelves of uh, some ingredients, 
and you also see a bunch of knives and all the kitchen tools you could ever want. It's it's a full chopped room. Yay! Uh, nice. Yeah. Like this is our ceremonial kitchen for the diabetes. Like you have full reign of everything here, and please ask our on-site chef if you have any questions or baking needs. What what is their name? Their name is Macadamia. Hey Mac. And you see the guys like, hey guys, hey, Chef Mac. <laughs> yeah, my name's Macadamia. Uh, I'm the chef here. Uh, keep the kitchen clean, you know, clean up between activities. Uh, if we want to keep it nice for the diabetes. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm just going to be over here. Yeah. Macadamia. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Macadamia. Uh, where are all the ingredients? Or, or sorry, we're, we're supposed to pick our own ingredients, he said? Yeah, you're going to want to make something from scratch. The diabetes is really going to appreciate that. You know, he's quite the connoisseur. Uh, I would say you'd want to make your butter from scratch and your flour from scratch. Okay. Could you appoint us to the cows and the grain? Yeah, so we got some wheat fields beneath here, and there's a barn next to it with a bunch of cows. Beneath so, here? You guys got, here? like, underground farms? So we're hanging right now in like uh, little birdhouses, yeah. I know we're hanging, but like, you know, where are the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, that's cool. I feel like my accent is going farther and farther towards Owen Wilson. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. What's the, hey man, that's not cool. What is yeah. that? <laughs> is that from Spongebob? What is that from? Maybe it is, huh? Hey, man, that's not cool. It is from Spongebob, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you're it's not Owen it. Wilson, that's Spongebob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're kind of in a hanging basket now, so okay. one of you can fly. I know you guys aren't birds, but... I, I can fly, Oh, I think. sweet, man. Probably yeah. not. I, I try to push my medallion to the, my chest and try to fly. All right, and you, you feel that you are able to. Yeah, yeah. I still got it. Oh, wow. I still got it. Yeah. It feels like on the material plane that you are are always bonded with Wenry. Nice. There ain't no mountain high enough. (laughs) Ain't no storm crazy enough. I require peanuts. Like, uh, yeah, peanuts. You might be able to find some of those kind of at the edge of the lake. Uh, You'll see them. It's a hold on as I look up what peanut plants look like. Just look like little little sprouts. Uh, looks, looks like a plant. Got round <laughs> leaves. Just start pulling plants until you see peanuts at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just gonna start yanking and tear up half his island. <laughs> the the tops kind of look like the same leaves that would almost be on like um oh shit, what are those called? I want to say turnips, but not turnips. I'm not proficient in plants. Beets? Or peanuts. No. The little red guys. Oh, Beets? Eh, radishes. Not, not, radishes, okay. thank you. It almost looks like radishes on the top. All right, you guys uh, want to split up for these tasks? <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah. I normally know, but yeah, sure. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, so Orcs on peanut duty. Uh, Puff, you want to milk a cow or grind some grain? Uh, I'll take the cow. Okay. It's like, I'm going to grind some grains. All right. Let's start with Yenry. Or you can roll for initiative. We'll see <laughs> how, how fast you guys are getting out of here. How well we can f- fight our Nine. foods. Uh, 16. 15. 15. All right. Yenry, Orc Puff. All right, Yenry, you're up. All right. Let's flower it. Show All me right. The grains. So, um, Macadamia guides you over to the uh, the doorway of the the kitchen, hanging out, and you're now looking down about a hundred feet to the ground, and you see a, a vast field of wheat below you. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and Macadamia says, "Like, yeah, you can go down there, and then we have uh some stone uh, grinders down there. So, uh, 
Yeah, you can just like get to it, man. Okay. Yeah, it sounds <laughs> like a lot of work, but I'll okay, I'll figure it out. And I push my medallion to my chest and hop off and kind of float my way down into the wheat fields. All right. You uh you fly down in the wheat fields and you start walking through it and running your hand through the grains. <laughs> And you Thinking see your wife and kids up on home. the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I look around to see if there's... Are there any tools at the edge of the field or anything? Is there a scythe or something? Yeah, roll a, roll a perception check. Okay. 17. Okay. Yeah, you see uh, a rather large scythe at the edge of the... Uh, uh, field there and looks like it's made out of bone oh okay i cast unseen servant <laughs> and make darwin start cutting some wheat for me <laughs> sick <laughs> all right darwin appears to life and you see a, a levitating scythe go through and start just hack slash and wheat left and right and it's all falling right. to the ground nice i scoop some up behind him as he's cutting and uh haul it over to the the stone grinders all right, and with that, let's go over to Orc. Where am I still in the basket? Yep. All right, uh, I'm gonna go to the lake. Is there a elevator or something? <laughs> Magnus is like, uh, no, not really, man. Um, I guess I could try and fly you down. Uh, is there water below? Do a little high dive. You you say this out loud, and Magnus is like, if you go through this tunnel here. For a little bit, you'll be going to another room that's kind of like our uh, just lookout deck, and that overlooks the water. You could probably jump down there. Oh, yeah, that sounds awesome. I'll do oh, that. Thanks, sweet, Mac. man. Yeah, no problem, man. You're starting to sound like a, a guy I knew um, who had a goat. From the vampire village. Anyway, see you later, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's probably right. <laughs> He's a good friend of mine. you <laughs> All right, so you run down the thatched hallway of this tube, and then you eventually get to this area where there's a bunch of pillows on the ground and a bunch of torches lit, and the whole front side of this basket is open and overlooking the, the waterfall and the lake. All right. I, I was going to say I stripped down, but I'm just wearing a loincloth, so <laughs> <laughs> I do a swan dive. All right, roll a... <laughs> Acrobatics check. Twenty-one. Nice. So you do like a, a a double somersault in pike position, and then you straighten out right at the end, and you dive seamlessly into the water. And when you rise up, you see three bird people there, and they all hold up tens. <laughs> part shark. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I am part shark. Cause sharks know how to dive. <laughs> uh, I'm Maybe. going to swim to the edge and look for peanut plants. All right. Roll a nature check. 15. All right. You scour around a little bit, and then you see uh, a grouping of plants that look like they have small round leaves, like what macadamia was describing. I pluck them. All right, you, you yank it out of the ground, and there's a, a comical bundle of shelled peanuts attached to the roots. Shelled? <laughs> yes, Sh shelled. <laughs> no, it's just, Sh it's just the peanuts. Shelled out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shelled peanuts. Look at how and ridiculous the, this is. The three birds hold up three more tens. No one's going <laughs> to believe this is what peanuts come kind of look like. <laughs> I'm going to start shoving peanuts in my backpack. All right. You're able to shove a lot of peanuts in that backpack <laughs> that apparently you have. I do have a backpack. I guess you probably do. So, yeah, you have you have a satchel I full do. of, of <laughs> shelled peanuts. <laughs> I don't know where else you're keeping the rest of the stuff. I don't know. I, I haven't been drawing it in the drawing, so I don't know if it exists. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I should take that off my equipment list. Yeah. <laughs> I shove the peanuts wherever I keep everything else. <laughs> <laughs> you know where it goes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And with that, let's switch Portable over to Portable hole. 
Yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's <laughs> one word for it. <laughs> there has to be a better way. <laughs> I put the peanuts in the annals of history. <laughs> Yeah, you got a lot of peanuts. <laughs> All right, and with that, let's switch over to Puff. Uh, a macadamia. Yeah, man. Might you point me in the direction of the cow pasture? Yeah, like right right below us here, uh, next to the wheat field, we got a barn, and that's all of our dairy cows. Yeah, okay. Cow. What other cows are there? <laughs> wow. Wow. Cow. Wow, a cow, yes. <laughs> cow. <laughs> cow. <laughs> so I guess uh, I'll take this uh, tunnel as well. That's the quickest way down, yeah? Yeah, I could carry you down or you could go uh, jump off the platform there with Orc, yeah. I don't know how I knew his name. Oh. I assume <laughs> you told me. I, well, I, I am an Orc. Yeah, he's With just the calling orc. you by your race. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's offensive. My name is Orc. Yeah. <laughs> ah, seems pretty clever to me. <laughs> yeah. Sounded like you said Orc with a C. My name's Orc with a K. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, you can you can go jump off. Lovers leap. Okie dokie. I'll jump off and hold my nose. All right, so you you run down the thatched hallways into the observation deck, and you uh, jump into the water and roll in acrobatics check. Fifteen. Okay, it's it's okay. Yeah, so you go and you you make a, a reasonable splash in the water, and you're able to to swim back to shore. And you see orc uh, like a hundred feet from you uh, pulling like plants out of the ground. I'm going to take off my robe and squeegee out some water. It's all <laughs> waterlogged. It's dragging behind me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do and that. my hat. Uh, I turn my hat out. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the three birds on the shore throw up three tens. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Not what I expected. <laughs> I'm flattered. We're all very impressed. Some nice squeegeeing. <laughs> yeah. It's like SpongeBob doing the mop. Puff, get a load of those, <laughs> those peanuts just come right out of the ground. That's a bunch of peanuts out of the ground? Weird. What, yeah. I thought that they just grew in barrels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't. Well, you learn something new every day. I wonder what these cows are going to look like. Everything here is weird and funky. <laughs> yeah, look for cow plants. Okay. <laughs> Just pull the udders out of the ground. Yeah. <laughs> oh, an udder plant? <laughs> That's utterly disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I will walk. I'm going to walk into the barn. And, right. and I'm going to prepare myself for some <laughs> weird. <laughs> so you walk into the barn and you see these giant black and white birds perched on uh, little <laughs> poles Aww. around the barn. And they have udders. Oh, uh, and you see one of them go, burk, burk, and <laughs> an egg pops out from behind it. Wait, I'll go pick up the egg. All right, you go. You go pick up a rather <laughs> large egg, <A> milk egg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shake it to my ear and listen. You don't. You don't hear anything. Hmm. I want to crack it open. All right, you uh, you hit it against the ground, and it is a very large egg. It has a yolk and white. Okay. Here, birdie, birdie, birdie. <laughs> and I put my mark. hands out, and I try to reach for for the udder. All right, roll an animal handling check. Oh boy, it's okay. You prepared yourself for this. <laughs> I got it. Wait, how? When you walked in, you said, I prepare myself for oh. something weird. <laughs> That's true. I was like, if yeah, I roll with advantage. This? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> roll a discomfort I'm check. Training his whole life <laughs> yeah. to milk a bird. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, well, I got it. I feel like I could have made this weirder, but... <laughs> oh, it's pretty weird. Really? <laughs> like you're milking like little eggs out of the udders or something, but... Oh. Alas. Well, we haven't seen what comes yeah, out of yeah, the udders. Yeah, there to yet. Be you have some I haven't put my buy. cards on the table yet, I guess, so... <laughs> There's still time. I got a 10. All right, so you you reach for the bird's udders and it like squawks really loudly at you, and you see its little chicken bird talon reach out and it tries to hit you. Ah, ah! Uh, and it crit fails and it loses its balance and it falls off the perch onto you. Oh! <laughs> Quick, milk it's... it while it's down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You take you take seven points of bludgeoning damage. It's heavy with milk. <laughs> <laughs> Help! Yeah. So you guys are laying in a pile of uh, yolk and egg white, and the birds on top of you right now. Oh yeah, it's gotten weird. <laughs> <laughs> this is growth. <laughs> the other birds are starting to create a ruckus as well. Can we transition to someone else's story for a moment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go back to Yenry. <laughs> Puff looks at the camera and just says, <laughs> Cut away! Cut away, please! Cut away! <laughs> <laughs> And scene. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go back to my green room. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a, and we cut a white, back a white and transition. They're all hanging out, laughing, smoking a cigar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is much better. <laughs> and I said, Milker, I hardly knew her. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Yenry. So you are. I forget what you were doing. Full of You're grain. Darwining. Yeah. yeah. He cut down a whole lot of grain and I mm -hmm. I picked it up after him and brought it over to the stone grinders. All right. So there is like a, a large stone wheel on the ground, and then there's another one that's kind of on an axle where if you spun it, it would like go around the bottom disc of stone. Like a mortar and pestle kind of thing, or Kind but of. like on a but like on a gear, yeah, yeah. It looks like two gears, like kind of perpendicular, and then one will like spin on top of the other, so it's like rolling on top of the bottom stone and would grind. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I I think that's how ancient grinders worked. I use that. <laughs> All right. So you you push the the wheat on the stone. And try and push the other one. There's like this handle that you can uh, push against to try and roll top stone on top of bottom stone. Roll a strength check. Okay. Uh, say 12. Okay. Uh, it does not budge. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> okay. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you guys a picture quickly of what a stone grinder wheel looks like. Just for reference. I'm stoked. Whoa. So yeah, it's like a big stone wheel huh. laying flat on the ground, and then the other one's like on an axle on top of it so it can roll around the bottom stone wheel. So does that... Oh. Oh, and then do you just like push on that the handle on the side, and it just causes and it so to go around in a circle and, and roll. spins middle, around, and, and it, it rolls the on the grain and crushes it. Yeah. Okay. What? Simple machine. Fascinating. That's really cool. We're learning so much today. That's like something that um what's that YouTube channel called? Primitive technology. Primitive technology would do. Mm-hmm. Man, people had to be so ripped back in the day. Mm-hmm. Everyone must have just been oh, shredded. Right. Yeah. I don't have to move anything. I, I know. <laughs> Actually, if instead of moved. sitting in front of the computer for 12 hours, I was outside grinding grain and hunting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd be I would huge. look different. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I would be two me's. Yeah. Um, all right. I will cast Enhance Ability on myself and give myself bull strength. So all right. Grind this grain and get that bread. All right. <laughs> As the kids say. 
So Yenri's muscles start bulging out of his tights. Okay. Advantage on strength checks, and my carrying capacity doubles, if that helps at all. Okay. Okay, first one's also a 12. That's my best. <laughs> 12. <laughs> but I You're... call over Darwin, and I say, help me push this. <laughs> so 13. All right. Roll a, roll a one for Darwin. Roll a strength check for Darwin. I don't know what is, I guess an eight. <laughs> okay. So you two together are just barely able to move this wheel and you start rolling it around and grinding the wheat into flour. Uh, and I curse the heavens and I'm like, why didn't I just milk the cows? It was, it was such more suited for me. Yeah. <laughs> I have experience in it. You can <laughs> talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And with that, let's go back to Orc and his peanuts. All right, I'm going to flop out portable hole. I'm going to dump all the peanuts in the hole. And I'm going to start mashing them with my feet. <laughs> like, like shell on. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to right. get the oil. It's better in the raw. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't need the oil. I need the peanuts. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I love this giant wine vat peanut style yeah. technique. You put your hands yeah. on your hips and just hop up and down. To yeah, mm -hmm. I wrap my hair up in a cloth. Yeah, <laughs> roll a performance check. <laughs> peanut performance. Yeah. <laughs> How well can you dance these peanuts into peanut butter? That's a eighteen. Peanuts love it. All right, so you you do a little. Uh, dance around in a circle you're you're jigging through the peanuts <laughs> and you start to feel that it's starting to get pretty mushy and sticky and peanut butter-esque um and yeah with that we'll uh go back over to puff it's a great album name jigging through the peanuts <laughs> jigging through the peanuts. <laughs> do it dylan make that album yeah <laughs> just folk songs about peanuts yeah, your first song would be called peanuts. George Washington Carver. <laughs> By the yeah. way, all the all the Owen Wilson stuff made me re reminded me of the song that we made in Oregon on the oh, coast. Yeah. When, oh yeah, oh <laughs> yeah. We we mashed wow, up. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, <laughs> we mashed up KDA and uh, what was the other one? Uh, I don't remember. I just remember Beats Owen Antique. Wilson's. Beats Antique. Oh, that was nice. And then it <laughs> would drop into again. Owen Wilson saying, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot why that was a part of it. <laughs> well, hey, I you, mean, why you not? Say that we, was the whole idea. idea. I think it was yeah. mostly you, Chris. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Dylan you were telling in, you me were which, how to change the key. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to make them match. I still have that. Dope. I want to hear that yes, for sure. You need to post that. Post it. Post it on the, the thing, the Insta. Yeah, the Insta thing, yeah, the Insta, uh, the Twitter. The, I gotta um, upload the socials. That social thing. Well then. All right. So you are currently being smashed by nothing giant has changed. Chicken cow. <laughs> it's still bad. Ah, <laughs> uh, excuse me, bird cow. <laughs> Can you get off of me? It's a macaw. Macau, <laughs> get you off see, of meow. <laughs> you see the Macau um, kind of get up and right himself, and he looks down at you, and his head is like twitching back and forth a little bit, and he waddles up a little bit and sits on you. He, oh, so the, in the Macau species, the men. Lactate. I guess I guess it would be a she. Yes, I. It, she walks up and sits <laughs> on you, and floofs her feathers. <laughs> Feathers. <laughs> she floofs her feathers. feathers. <laughs> Is that her feather utters? Her her, yeah. her fetterers. <laughs> her fetterers. She rogers her fetterers. <laughs> Roger Federer. Well, I am going to use a little bit of magic to get me out of this bind. <laughs> I'm gonna use. Is there any? Is there anything else in this barn? I mean, I'd say there's normal like stuff that you would use to take care of animals. There's hay. There's, I don't know, buckets. 
At times like this, I wish there were like weirdly specific magic spells that you had that only applied to certain situations, <laughs> like milk bird cow. Like yeah. levitate udders. I'm going to use milk bird cow. <laughs> Good thing I have this. Milk object. You're like, wow, yeah. I really didn't think this would come in handy when I chose it. <laughs> One day. <laughs> uh, well, in lieu of milk bird cow, I'm going to use... I'm going to use animate objects. Cool. All right. So you definitely see there's some like rakes or, or pitchforks in there, and then there's uh, buckets. There's, Ooh, I mean, prepare troughs. For a, prepare for a rough milking, Mister <laughs> Bird Cow. <laughs> <laughs> there's suddenly an angry mob of villager tools <laughs> coming after yeah. you. Is there a? Uh, is there, are there any saddles? Um, sh- sh- here I'll roll for it. <laughs> Yes, There's there saddles? are cow chicken saddles. Okay, <laughs> these are very multifunctional animals. It's like instead yeah, of having they serve every purpose, <laughs> beast of burden and milk and egg and <laughs> well, okay, the Macau rodeo. Yeah, <laughs> so I have, I have Mac rodeo. I have a couple of saddles under my control, and I have a few buckets <laughs> <laughs> and a pitchfork. So I'm gonna yeah, the the pitchfork is more for. Uh, <laughs> Intimidation? Yeah. <laughs> it's like getting milked by Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. That sounds terrible. Oh, <laughs> well, right, so what I'm, you want to do with this arsenal of barnyard items? So I want to I want to I want to make the uh one of the the saddles saddle on the, the back of the bird. And then use okay. its use its stirrups to grab the bird's legs, and it'll lift it up into the air. <laughs> oh my god! The saddle can't reach far enough around to grab the legs. Okay, well then it'll just reach around and grab it by its belly with its stirrups and pick it up okay. into the air. <laughs> I'm confused on how the saddle picks the bird up into the air. Like how you think that happens? <laughs> Well, it wraps around, right? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's but I mean, it's on his back. It's like it's not levitating, though. Why is it's it animated? Not? It's animated. But I just that just means it can move, not defy the laws of physics. Why not? I thought well, it'd be like Mickey Mouse. There were yeah. things floating through the air, right? That's fine. No, I can work with ground objects. I can work yeah. with ground <laughs> objects. All right, then on two of those saddles will tag team the bird. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> and wrestle it so to this... the ground <laughs> <laughs> all right so the saddles are able to push the bird kind of over on its side and onto the ground uh and off of you and you hear it squawking going book meow book meow book meow <laughs> and it's flailing quite a bit and the other birds around it are growing restless okay then i'll i'll you know, wave the buckets over. And I'll do the mm-hmm. milking myself. I'll work right. along with these animate objects. Okay. So you, you walk over to the Macau, and it looks pretty sad right now. I'm sorry, but you sat on me first, so... <laughs> Too bad, Macau, this is happening. Let's transition into Puff's voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here I go milking. All right, roll an animal handling check. Well, it's a four. All right. You start milking the bird, and you get a little bit of milk out. You do not handle the animal well. Yeah. You got you have a buck You have a bucket of fear milk. That is tainted milk. <laughs> okay. You got any more in there, Macau? Muck no. <laughs> Muck out. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess I should have asked you. Can we let bygones be bygones? <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> it's turned into a like soap opera very quickly. Eleven. It's not good. No. the The chicken just gets up and just goes back to its perch. 
This went poorly. <laughs> you do not have the lactation persuasion. Yeah. What about you other macaws? How are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> they don't look great. <laughs> He's watched you wrestle someone to the ground and forcefully milk it. It sat on me. <laughs> yeah. It fell on you. What What can I do to After persuade you? After you failed your first animal handling What deck. can I do? I look deep into their eyes. I say, what can I do? I'm sorry. What can I do to persuade you to give me some milk? They look hungry. Oh. Do you like peanut? Peanut? And I make the shape of a peanut in the air. (laughs) (laughs) Do you like peanut? Like an hourglass shape? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Do you like woman? (laughs) You want female Macau? (laughs) So when you're saying peanuts, their they're like heads are perking up and they're looking around a little bit. Oh, they like peanut. <laughs> I walk to the door and I say, hey, Orc! What? Could you spare some peanuts? <laughs> Why? The birds like peanuts. They won't give uh, me their milk. I mean, I'm making peanut butter for the beast. Just, I just, I need to borrow a cup of peanut butter, neighbor. <laughs> All right. Um, got something to put it in? I have my hat. <laughs> Perfect. Have you, have you walked over here now? It sounds yeah. like you're not yelling anymore. I, that, that, was the, <laughs> that was the natural transition of me walking was, closer to you. Uh, okay. Walking and yelling. <laughs> All right, yeah, here, scoop up. You can have a bit, I guess. Thank you. Appreciate it. And no I problem. scoop it up in my hat. I'll see you back up there. Yep. I got just a got hat it. full of peanut butter to your inventory. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And I walk back to the barn. All right. So once you walk in, you see some of the birds like jump off their perch and start coming towards you. Okay. And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on there, Macaws. <laughs> Do you understand the agreement? And I point at their udders. <laughs> <laughs> and the the macaw closest to you, like, knocks its head down very rapidly towards the ground. Okay. Here you go. <laughs> I'm going to milk you now. <laughs> All right. And the mac- macaw goes over and he buries his beak in the peanut butter hat and uh, roll an animal handling check with advantage. 12 <laughs> so the macau begrudgingly lets you milk it and you're able to fill up the rest of your bucket with milk are you done with that i would like my hat back <laughs> he pulls his beak out and it's full of peanut butter just peanut butter everywhere and the hat is mostly empty of peanut butter <laughs> and mostly soiled yeah. okay i'll have yenry fix this when I get back up there. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, that's the perfect segue to go back to Yenry. I, so you I, have a wheel full of flour now. I've been on that grind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I scoop it out. All put right. it in a a bag, perhaps? <laughs> yeah. You got, a, you got a backpack full of flour now. Cool. All right. Uh... Yeah, I start walking back toward or flying, I guess. I I dismiss Darwin and start flying back up towards the uh main chambers. Okay. So you're able to make your way up there and you see Macadamia sitting at the doorway is like, Oh nice man. Yeah, that looks great. Um you might want to get sugar next, maybe? Um, I would just ask one of the neighbors for a cup. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um is there like a bowl or something I can drop this off in so I can maybe, you know, fill up some more sugar? Yeah, definitely, man. And he uh, grabs a big stainless steel bowl out from underneath one of the uh, uh, tables and puts it on there. And you you dump your backpack full of flour into it. Nice. All right. Uh, where are the, the neighbors around like, here? Oh, man, like any of these houses that you see around here, any of these hanging houses are all people. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, all right. I, I walk out the the main stretch there and go up to the nearest house and knock on the door. All right. You you fly up to one of the little bird houses and you're you're perched on like the little stick that's coming out from the house, like a little bird house, and you you knock on the door, and uh, the door opens and there's this old man bursting. There's like, what do you want? And what are you? <laughs> Sorry, I know. Don't be surprised by my appearance. Uh, I'm I'm a visitor, just trying to do some baking here. Just wonder if I could uh, borrow a cup of sugar, baby. Hmm. And roll a persuasion check. Okay. Fourteen. And he looks at you begrudgingly. And he's like, "If I give you a cup of sugar, maybe you give me some money." Oh. Uh, I mean, okay. Uh, what what currency are you guys on? Like, oh, except one copper coin. Well, you drive a hard bargain, sir. But that's fine. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I give him a copper coin. <laughs> he says, whoop de doo Okay, here's your cup of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Have a good day. And he closes the door in front of you. All right. And I fly back down with my... I assume this is enough sugar. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next is going to be Orc. Uh, put the last few stomps on the, the peanut butter. All right. You do that. And now you have a, a whole portable hole of peanut butter. Foot butter? Yeah. Ew. <laughs> it's never going to come out all the way. All right. I I scoop the hole back up and look to the sky. How do I get up there? <laughs> hey, hey, judges. Hey, diving judges. How do I, how do I get up there? Yes. <laughs> like, oh, sorry. We, I forgot that we existed here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess we could, I guess we could help you up. All right. Yes, get one of your javelins there and we'll fly you up to the top. All right, here you go. All right. And they, they hold the javelins in their, their talons and then you pull up bar onto it and they fly you up to the kitchen. Mac, I've got peanut butter, fresh, fresh smashed. Homemade peanut butter. Nice, man. Sweet. All right, I'm trying to think of what the next step is here. I mean, your guys are going to need some some eggs for sure. Um, and I guess you're making chocolate. We got some cocoa beans, or you can go get your own, but... I think we should just use uh, what's here for the rest Whoa. of the ingredients. Puff, how'd you get up here? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just speaking to myself in the barn. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to say that when I get up there. I just wanted to practice <laughs> in the barn. We can, we can <laughs> sidebar to puff in the barn right now. <laughs> what do you think, birds? Should I should yeah. I tell them? Do you think <laughs> I should tell them? <laughs> They all squawk and lay eggs and go back up to their perches. Yeah, I'll take that as a yes. I think. <laughs> all right, I head up the. Wait, hey. <laughs> How'd I get up there? <laughs> also, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What else might he, we need he, for baking? He's, he's not supposed to know. <laughs> yeah. What? But he really doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. He said, These are multi-purpose birds <laughs> that might provide another useful. <laughs> Nobody yeah, we don't need told those. me we needed them. <laughs> <laughs> I start to walk out, and then I have, uh, my ears are burning, and I'm like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> Eggs go in pastries. <laughs> <laughs> and I grab an armful of eggs. <laughs> and now you're standing alone at the doorway of the barn with your bucket of milk and armful of eggs. <laughs> and now I put the eggs in the milk so I can have a free hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
like bobbing for apples. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and then I go, hey, judge birds. <laughs> <laughs> Who are not there. They are up in the kitchen with Orc currently. I go, oh, I guess I'll sit on the ground because I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I sit on the ground. And then once I'm on the ground, I have an epiphany and I use dimensional door to get up to the... <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So, so just had to sit Yenry, in your thinking spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Yenry and Orc, you see Puff appear out of thin air, and he's got a bucket full of milk eggs. Oh, Puff, how'd you get here? <laughs> did you bring uh, milky eggs? I sure did. <laughs> I had an inkling that eggs would be needed. We were just talking about that. Yeah, you inkled right, man. <laughs> 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 Gotta trust the ink. When you got the inkling, you got the inkling. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and Macadamia goes over to one of the cabins. He's like, I got some uh, some good cocoa uh, here, too, if you want to use that. It's already ground up. Yeah. Sounds great. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So, it looks like you guys got everything you need. You can bake some croissants. You can milk, make some milk and cocoa. I can't talk right now. <laughs> You can mix some milk and cocoa together and make some cocoa sauce. <laughs> I think that's what they you call know, it. Chocolate. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were a chef. It's a it's a different dialect here. <laughs> I you think I know what kind of chef sauce. he is. <laughs> cocoa sauce. And yeah, you got peanut butter. Yeah, some nice shell on crunchy peanut butter. Yeah, it looks. <laughs> Really crunchy. Oh, shell on. I thought that was like some <laughs> French term. <laughs> shell on. on. Shell on. <laughs> <laughs> it's shell on quality peanut butter. <laughs> peanut butter. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> it sell nicely in a Whole Foods. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So macadamia starts helping you line up all the ingredients on the table, and you got it all in front of you. All right. Do you have a perhaps a recipe book for <laughs> for uh, like regular croissants? Maybe we can just like modify and figure out how we're gonna make our special one. Yeah, we're just gonna make croissants and then make sandwich. We'll just spread like peanut butter and chocolate. So I think uh, you what make was it called cocoa sauce? Cocoa sauce. Yeah. So I think you make the dough, cut it in your little triangles that you roll for the croissants, but then you place a little nugget of chocolate sauce. Or cocoa sauce and a little nugget of peanut butter and then roll it all together. Oh, wow. Yeah. Then it bakes Dang. into the center. Oh. And then we're supposed to not eat these and give them to some dragon? Yes. That's the greatest challenge of all. That's the <laughs> real quest. <laughs> yes. Roll a temptation saving throw. <laughs> well. All right. Who's going to start mixing this stuff up? So Macadamia goes over to the wall and he picks out this uh, like slate of stone and he brings it over to you. He's like, "Here's the uh, here's our special croissant croissant uh, <laughs> recipe." <laughs> All right, Puff, churn that milk into butter. Uh do I have a butter churn? There is a butter churner in this kitchen. Yes. Okay, check back in and about. Three hours. <laughs> <laughs> do you have... Uh, d use that spell on me that gives me extra fast movement. Yeah, use churn objects. <laughs> <laughs> I knew all these weird <laughs> food-related spells would come in here. Animating spells, yeah. All of my spells are butter focused. <laughs> Milk objects, churn objects. That's the butter verse. Yeah. <laughs> <Butterverse>. <laughs> oh my god. Let's use the polymorph and turn verse. you into a butter churn. What? <laughs> Chur butter churn's not an animal. <laughs> Is butter churn an instrument? <laughs> give no, give me cat's grace, and I'll be. Wait, does that give me fast speed, or is that just make turn butter as good as a cat? 
They're good with milk. It gives you speed. Or no, it gives you dexterity, doesn't it? Anyway. That seems yeah, helpful. I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I can use enhance ability on Puff and give him Cat's Grace to be super good churner. All right. You are able to do that. And Puff, you pour your, your, you take out the eggs and you pour all the milk into the butter churner and you feel very dexterous before you start churning. And uh, roll a dexterity check. And what is it? Do I get advantage? Is that the, the yeah. thing? Mm hmm. I have rolled under a 10 for every single roll tonight. <laughs> that is a you 9. You the right dice? <laughs> That's a good question, but yes, I am. <laughs> roll the d12. <laughs> I have done that a lot where I've done a d12. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely All the right. 20. So Orc and Ren, where you look over and Puff is very lacklusterly churning this butter. I'm going to go recklessly churn the butter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go over there and roll uh, an athletics check. First to push Puff out of the way. No, you could just push him out of the way. Athletics? Mm-hmm. 23. All right. You push Puff aside and you take that butter stick and you start churning up a goddamn storm. Oh, yeah. Watch and learn, Puff. Watch and churn. Yeah, it, it sounds like a jackhammer over there. I think I'll just watch. You have to churn. <laughs> Not in the mood to learn or churn. <laughs> yeah. Learn and churn. All right, so the next thing that you see on the list is to mix all the dry ingredients together. Yeah, Yenry starts doing that in the big stainless steel bowl. He throws in the, the flour, a, bit, a little bit of water, and all the... Water is Other not a dry bits. ingredient. <laughs> but, well, ah, uh, you screwed it up. <laughs> I realize, but I believe that goes into a croissant. Like, yeah. Water is the least dry ingredient. <laughs> it's literally what makes everything else wet. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, man, the recipe was pretty simple. Uh, <laughs> I'm going off, off book. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I combine the dry ingredients. All in right, so you put sugar and flour, <laughs> and macadamia brings some uh, special yeast over as well to you, and you mix it all together. Thank you and, for uh, your special you, yeast. You do a little salt bay as well. <laughs> nice. All right. And said, yeah, and the next thing on the list is to mix together all the wet ingredients. I guess I'll try again. Do you guys know what again. the wet ingredients are? <laughs> Egg. <laughs> Butter. This yeah. Water. Heart. Yeah. Water is Fire. on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Fire is the least wet ingredient. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you successfully identify wet things and put them together into a bowl. And then the next thing on the list is to put them together. And so you put them all together and Magnolia says, all right, now you got to stir this up, but like not too much. And then we got a magic oven over here where usually this would take like a long time to cook, but it'll be ready in like one minute. Cool. Oh, shit. Oh, it's like an instant pot. Yeah. Magic. Which is basically IRL magic. For real. Yeah. It is. <laughs> I guess it, a croissant only takes 15 minutes. There's a yeah, lot of... We, we're we're going to ignore rising dough and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, I think there would be some uh, laminating of the dough layers as well in real life. Yes, exactly. But this is a magic oven, so it just works. Mm -hmm. So you guys are able to mix it all together and then start rolling it out on the table. And you've got beautiful, pretty, pretty beautiful dough there. We got to put our ch chocolate sauce. And mm -hmm. peanut butter. Mm -hmm. And then we roll them into individual little croissants. A little bit of cocoa sauce. A little bit of shalom peanut butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 These are croissants Mwah. with chocolate sauce and shalom peanut butter. Cocoa <laughs> sauce <laughs> and shalom. Cocoa sauce. <laughs> shalom <laughs> peanut butter. I'm going to just start telling people that my peanut butter is shalom. <laughs> shalom, shalom peanut butter. Peanut butter. 
Sounds fancy. Would you I like some cocoa sauce with that? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, would I? Like, what? We have to try it. We have to try this recipe in real life. Fuck mm-hmm. yeah! I plan on it. Yeah. yeah. We all need to be together. Yeah. 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 And we need to make it for the the Butterverse YouTube channel. <laughs> Pan au chocolat au chalon peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> Can that be the name of the episode? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I have it on good authority that it can be. <laughs> we have the power. Thank God. <laughs> All right. I want you each to roll a, I think, performance check. I don't know what cooking would be under, a but that sounds about check. right. A bacon yeah. check. <laughs> I rolled a nat 20. And have plus twelve to performance, oh so that's a God. thirty-two. Oh my God. Wow! <laughs> this is the most important part. That's I rolled yeah. a thirteen. <laughs> I obviously rolled a five. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fifty altogether. I mean, that's not bad. That's pretty damn good. Um, so you guys start rolling out things. Puff, you're cutting kind of like squares instead of triangles, but Yenry's coming in and just slashing it down the middle, so it's then triangles. <laughs> and then you guys put little little dollops of peanut butter and cocoa sauce, chocolate sauce, in each one and roll it up, and you have a bunch of beautiful croissants <laughs> of chocolat and chalon peanut butter. <laughs> and uh, you you put it in the oven and... After a minute, you hear a magical ding, and you open it up, and you see 20 beautiful croissants. A shalak un shalom peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever they're called. Or whatever they're called. Or whatever. <laughs> shalak? <laughs> Covered in shellac. Yeah. <laughs> Mac, what do you think? Is he? Is this? Is he going to do it? Like, yeah, man, that those look great. It's going to be a close one, but I think the uniqueness is going to really shine through on these. How, how many? How many does the beast need? I would say probably half of those should be for the beast, <gasps> oh. and then the other half you might want to keep for uh, the old cloud giant up the, there. The, oh. the big man upstairs. Oh, he okay. likes treats too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was part of it. Hmm. Maybe he'll spare but one treat. There's <laughs> we can split the three ways. The diabetes and the obesitis. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, okay. So where well, do we find the the beastus? Where is this beastus? He told you he was in the like pond or lake that's at the base of the waterfall. So the one you actually dove into. Oh, I was swimming with the beasties, <laughs> huh? Yeah. You were. <laughs> You're dining with the beasts. <laughs> well, I'm glad okay. he wasn't in the mood for half work today. You were swimming <laughs> in beasts feces. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you got you got a pan of croissants, a pan, pan of pan. pan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mac, how do you typically offer the treats? So on the uh, north end of the lake, like on the other side of the waterfall, there's a big old altar. And you can usually put it there, and it'll awaken the diabetes. We can put them in the hole. They'll be safe there, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, definitely. Or we could shibalba. <laughs> Just, Just dump them. Throw them over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> what? They're sending them the shibalba. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, let's put them in the, uh, the hole. <laughs> Do you guys want to get in the hole? I'll just dive off. For sure. I guess. Sure. Don't be surprised if a couple of these croissants go messy. Go all over does, the, <laughs> does the orientation of the hole relate to the orientation of the holder? No, I would say it's a different not. realm. Like right? it's it's in yeah, it's in the astral plane, so it is it's permanently has its own gravity in the upward direction. But then how do people fall out of the hole? I guess once you open it, it's in your realm. Yeah, I would say that's true. All right. Hop on in this uh, physics anomaly, boys. We'll do. Take our pastries with us. And you uh, you all dive in the hole with a, a hot pan of croissants. 
And I, and I slap it up. Puff's hands away. Oh, <laughs> I forgot you were here too. Yeah. <laughs> Thought I was alone. I seal it up and I swan dive again. All right, and you you dive off the platform and into the water, and uh, roll a perception check. Nat twenty. All right, and as you dive into the water, you open your eyes and you can see very distantly a pair of large glowing yellow eyes at the bottom of the lake. Okay, I mean... And they seem to be I, staring at you. I wave at it, and I... <laughs> and it blinks. And I sort of gesture like, come on over, <laughs> and then swim to the altar. All right. Uh, you get out of the water, and you're standing next to the altar, and um, it has, like, carvings of all these sweets, like cupcakes and other things on it. <laughs> and you uh, flop out the hole, and Yenry and Puff jump out with your pan of croissants. And I place 10 of the 20 croissants on the altar. <laughs> Do you have some words you would like to say? Oh, great diabetes. Enjoy this feastus. <laughs> of pan au chocolate and shallon peanut butter made especially for you. And then I hold my hands into the air. <laughs> and you you see some bubbles start to rise from the middle of the lake as you say this. And all of a sudden you see this giant green lizard like burst out of the top of the lake and you hear like a Godzilla style like... <laughs> <laughs> and it lands with a thud in the water and creates some little waves that crash towards you and it moves through the water and is now standing at the altar with its head hanging above you and he's like i'll say he's like 90 feet long um and he's a, a large green dragon and he snorts and two puffs of smoke come out and hit you guys. And he glares down at the croissants. And he puts his head down and starts sniffing them a little bit. And you see little bits of drool start to fall from his mouth. And he flicks out his forked tongue and he picks one up and eats it. And he nods questioningly a little bit. And then he looks at you, and he bows his head at you, and he laps up the other croissants. Yay! May, may we hop on your back and ride up the mountain? And you hear another... <laughs> and he lays his head down on the ground in front of you. I think that's a yes. <laughs> I All aboard! Yeah. <laughs> and we hop on the head. <laughs> Yeah, and you're able to get on its back, and he raises his head, and he starts flying towards the large peak rising up from the middle of the island and up the waterfall, and you feel the mists of the waterfall rushing towards you, and the town below you is disappearing, and you start to see the clouds above you coming closer and closer, and then you burst through, and you now are in full sunlight, and you can see everything around you, and... In front of you, you see the peak of the mountain, and there's a golden house standing atop of it, gleaming in the sunlight. Yeah.